Um, part of me has accepted what this show is. Like you just said. Good. Good for um, you. The show- <laughs> No, I, but seriously, I just um, want you to, if, as long as you're enjoying it, then no, that's all I care about. I don't know if I'd say I'm enjoying it. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> pizza time. Pizza time. Pizza time. You're late. Pizza time. Pizza time. What's up, my friend Alex? How are you been? I am. I How have I been? I, I have been great. Wonderful. You know, hey, summer's coming to an end. Uh, I'm a big sports guy. College football starts next week. Then the NFL oh. starts. You know, then I'm, you know, we're piecing out to Italy for a couple weeks. Right. So hit the reset button. Look at wedding venues. Oh, man. What a mixture. I can relate to half of that. What's that? Uh, sports, as you, you know. Sports. What are you talking about? I, I will love, I do, I know, I know it. You and I go to a <laughs> Cowboys game every year. You love sports. You're like, oh, man. oh yeah, Cowboys. Yeah. yeah, they're a great volleyball right. team. Oh lord. Um, <laughs> you know, Ed, before you know, before the year is out, we're gonna go to some sort of sporting event. I've been to sports event. events. I just, sports I don't. Events. <laughs> that's a well, come. That is a. That, you and I know that's a legit term. How dare sporting. you? Oh, oh my god. Okay, no, sporting. You kinda, no, you're right. I gotta, I gotta listen. I gotta listen though. Sporting event. My bad. Okay, sports. <laughs> sporting event. Uh-huh. Good, good lord. I know I know a little bit, but anyways, yes, I I don't know any of that, but the uh, the wet the the it, Italy wedding planning. Oh, I'm I'm all for I'm all with oh, you on yes, that one, man. Yeah, I'm all. Well, it's it's wedding season. It's I'm I'll by the next by the next time we do another the next episode, I will I will have been married. Uh, you're coming next week, so that's yes. great. Happy, happy, but you're you're in the early stages. Yeah, we're of in planning. the honeymoon of the wedding season. You're in the honeymoon of the wedding. That's hilarious. Uh, yeah, yeah. Talking to you and we had another friend get married recently. Like it just sounds like. I literally said this to Olivia on the car ride up. It sounds fucking miserable. Oh, to, yeah. all, to all the guys out there that are planning weddings, man, or guys and girls and everybody. One to you. Yeah, I feel so like. Yo, don't forget, like, the wedding day, you guys should also enjoy it. That should be important. To, you know, you're not, it feels like weddings are set up to be for everybody else except for the bride and the groom. Like, no, I know. No, you're, no right? yeah, it's fun. It's funny you mentioned, well, because it, it is a weird balance, though, right? Because you, oh, yes, yeah. It's for you, but at the same time, the 150 plates of food aren't for you and you want to you want to you want to take care of people obviously people are traveling yeah uh, for your wedding we will be going to italy and you know you just want to you know you want to make sure people have a good time and you can't please everybody and you but yeah you know i mean i guess you're right you can't please everybody but you want to be the best show i think i mean you just told me there's going to be some fried chicken at your wedding so (laughs) bro i'm in i'm fucking i'm I'm there. You also told me open bar starts at 4 30. Yes, it does, before, my friend. 30 minutes before the ceremony. I got y'all. I'm be drunk during the ceremony. I got y'all. And I love y'all, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the dog. Look at the dog go down the aisle. <laughs> oh, stop it. Is that? Oh, my. You would. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have told you. you By the time this is out. Okay. Oh, I hear yeah, that. Well, I mean, of course, Saki's got to be part of it. Yeah, I no, love yeah. It. Yes. Bar yeah. 430, baby. Some interesting yes. food. At least chicken. Yeah, I know. I'm taking I'm trying to do my best to take care of it. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Man, it won't be what it won't be is that you know, that American expensive as shit food that <laughs> nobody likes. <laughs> like, how do you fuck that up? You know, I like you said, steak, chicken. How the fuck do you fuck that up for a wedding? And most of the time it's they still do. They still happen to do that. It's just so like, I feel like you're never mind. so much that it has to get messed up you know let's it might, get, yeah it's gonna get dried out oh we gotta cook it all so good or else we're gonna get a lawsuit at Salmonella. the same time yeah at the same time i feel like they do have to time it's a weird timing right because you got to cook the food early to to cook that much stuff but right. also then it starts to dry out like that's why probably the chicken's dry i don't know i mean i'm not yeah. a Man, but that's know. probably it it's I'm tricky sure I, I, I should be no yeah exactly i mean i don't know but you know that that typically happens Anyways, yes. uh, welcome to this week's episode of Pizza Time, everybody. Uh, we're gonna, as usual, we're gonna start off with some news, uh, and then move on to some some reviews. Uh, but let's t- go over the news for a bit this week. Sure. Uh, lots of WB news again, of course. And do you have it still up behind you? Yep. What, yeah. what, the, what F the F Ezra? Ezra. 
still there. Although, although the first thing we're going to talk about is a uh, good thing? Question mark. We'll see. I don't know. Maybe some light, possibly, uh, with what what with Ezra visiting WB execs. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're also going to be talking about uh, the Shazam and Aquaman two release dates being pushed. Ugh. God, well, uh, yeah. our well, thoughts I mean, about Aquaman that. And it's, got pushed a lot. Yeah. Oh yeah, that got like kicked to the. Cur- oh, I don't want to say that again. We're going to we're going to get we're going to dive into that. We're going to get we're going to dive into our feelings about that. Who knows? Maybe that's a good thing. I might I might actually think that's not a terrible move, but we'll right. see. Um, and then of course, uh, Miss uh, somebody uh, is being tooted around to possibly be the next DC chief, the Kevin Feige of the of the DC world and so we'll do a little bit of that talk and see who they found um and then for reviews we're going to delve into she hulk episode two e and then a little bit of a summer recap uh for the summer the summer's over god that was fast yeah and um yeah we'll go over some of the things that we we liked didn't like and just our over feelings of 2022 summer movies and uh and maybe tv so that's the agenda for today let's get started yeah yeah let's do it Okay, so for up first for news, we're gonna start with Ezra. Um, yeah, um, again, every week now there seems to be so, there's just another update on the Ezra Miller happening. Really quick, if you still don't know, and uh, by next week, please get caught up because we are not gonna keep <laughs> re- recapping it. But <laughs> Ezra Miller, for the past like four months, has been getting into some trouble. He is the Flash, and the the next Flash movie that he has been uh, that he has shot and done has been in quite the turmoil because of his actions. Right. Uh, I won't go over it all, but he he been a bad boy. He hadn't mm-hmm. been the, the the best good boy. And uh, he's been, but lately, he's been trying to make some amends. Last week, he came out uh, making a statement to everyone, I guess, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that he's, he's sorry for his actions and he's seeking help. May, if that's all him, great. But who knows? It might be a part of a whole PR stunt. Uh, that being said, this week, interestingly enough, uh, the, the Hollywood Reporter reported that Ezra Miller uh, actually visited the one of the Warner Brothers um, offices in Burbank this week to talk to some of the, the execs. And now there were no details uh, given out. However, they did end up saying like, yeah, it was a positive, it was a positive meeting. I assume that it was Miller, a lot of Miller going like, Hey, I'm sorry. And then like, like what, what can we do to help out? Mm -hmm. But that's what I wanted to start off with. And I wanted to get your uh, input, Alex, like, what do you, is this good? What do you think the meeting was about? And how do you feel about it in general? Well, uh, I had read something from a Hollywood reporter that sources say, so this is all Mm. sources. That can't be confirmed or denied, I guess. Um, or I guess it can't be denied, right? Um, but I had read on Hollywood Reporter that he went to talk about the options on the table. Meaning okay. that he was there basically to save face and say, I'm sorry, and I do want to get this movie out. And apparently that they felt the mood around the lot had really shifted. That they were like, we feel like this movie can't finally come out. We are going to stick to the release date. We're not going to push it because we, we saw you said in the, in the intro they pushed two other movies. They're not touching the Flash, right? Um, and they could have just said, you know what, we'll give the Flash more time. We'll push it till uh, December instead of June, and we'll we'll move Aquaman to June and Shazam to March. But they didn't. They they left it the way it was. And um, yeah, the supposedly the mood was better. And this Hollywood Reporter article. Uh, went a step further to say that Ezra wasn't wasn't remorseful for his actions, that he was remorseful for the Flash potentially getting canceled. And that's oh. why he came in and decided to start his, look, this Ezra apology tour. It's all everyone's going to be talking about. Now, look, uh, I said last week, I think he should still be held accountable to his actions. You know, and a lot Absolutely. of people on Instagram, or not Instagram, TikTok, were quick to say, oh, no, no, he's... He's, it's a start, and I'm like, sure, it's a start, but, you know, hey. There's a finish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to fucking get to the finish line. You can't just be like, oh, but, uh, yeah. It's interesting that he cares this much about this movie and about this character to basically come in and fix everything. So right. maybe that's a good sign. 
Uh, I hope it's a good sign, and I hope it you know it does overall help the movie because again, we've said this before. You and I agree. It does suck because this movie has a lot of people involved in it. A lot of people have worked on it. You know, WB has thrown a lot of money at this thing. Um, so, yeah, uh, um, my thoughts are that it's clear that he's just trying to save as much face as he can to get the movie to come out. And it, this was the first step to it. Um, again, I do think that it is partly WB and partly him like it's they're working in tandem to release statements to start to fix things uh and that yeah we'll see what we'll see where it goes but i don't know what yeah you? no i think uh, yeah overall i do think that the uh i think uh, for, here's what I, I know it's a good thing for the movie that's for damn sure right i think this yeah. this whole this whole move about going to them and making amends is great for the movie yeah. Does this mean what I'm wondering is does this mean that that Ezra may actually be a part of the marketing campaign and actually be out there championing for the film again? And you know, as as you know, we've talked about this before. I told him I I, I even I said I'm like, no, no way, yeah. no way in hell is, are they gonna bring back yeah. uh Millard on this campaign to, to to promote the film after what he's done. I don't think so. Uh, but I right, also right. didn't I also didn't think though that he would it would get this far into 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 saris this quickly so now that he has that's a good point I, it's yeah i didn't think yeah. it would be that quick it got it but got now, to saris very fast it got like, to saris yeah. quite very fast oh, and no. um i it, now i'm having a bit of a change of heart it's very possible i think that you, they might actually have a they might have talked about ezra going back on to to promote the film in which case W may WB may just be having a bit of a a, a recourse here. So hopefully, maybe. I wouldn't be completely surprised if we saw Ezra Miller on the press tour at this point. After yeah. like it has been the fastest 180 ever. Like this Pretty guy fast. Went from like I'm not gonna report, I'm not gonna show up for my uh to get served my papers or anything like that, to oh, I'm in Burbank, I'm gonna show up and right. it, it went from a statement to meeting high level executives and literally apparently if the article is to be believed the a hollywood report article that people on the on the lot were very worried about this movie they knew how much the movie meant for Warner Bros in 2023 mm -hmm. and now it seems that like hey now they're confident again they feel like it's going to come out again and i think that's I, I agree with you it was overall like that's a good sign that means i think we're going to see one we're definitely seeing this movie right it's 100 percent happening oh yeah so two would be we will see ezra miller on the press right now look hollywood press you know you want to you got to call him out you know now again exactly they're, they're going to and i think oh, they should i think if he does it they need to and right. it, it's only it's only better for the movie that's the whole thing it's like this is what pr in the pr world this is what this is the win right, right, right is right. if is if if he is remorseful if he is going to uh turn it around and he behaves right then i it's a, it's a, then then they could really 180 it i really and if only and i think it might even be better for the uh for the reception of the film than its initial than its initial yeah. excitement for it in all That's honesty point. you yeah. know yeah i can redemption story he changed yeah. his life around he, and now this Hollywood loves this out. shit. Yeah. Whether Again, whether it's fake true or fake, right? Like right. whether it's it's artificial or if it's real, in terms of the movie, it's a good it's it's good. Hollywood loves a good redemption story. That's exactly what yeah. this is. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I think it's it's a good sign, one for the movie, obviously, two for the press tour. And and you're right. Uh Hollywood press is going to get the chance to ask him some questions. Look. You and I have both been at Junkets, and yes. we know they put the kibosh on questions they don't like very fast. So do they get to call them out? I don't know. We, I'm sure some, some journalists will try to, but we'll see. But again, you and I have been at Junkets, and to think if you think, if you think the questions are you know, well-written and thought about before, no, they're not. Everything, <laughs> everything is Wow. Like, <laughs> no, I mean, no, it's, it's just funny. Yeah, yeah you, just calling them out. Everything. This yeah. is all a controlled environment. So, yeah, they but they, they'll know. The That's the thing, right? Is like they'll 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 open that door a little bit for questions relating to that. But it'll be very right. small. 
Very, very small. Very, small. very yeah. slim. Because, you know, like, if you go, I know you love sports because, like, we just talked off the top. Absolutely. Of the uh, absolutely. When players do some sketchy shit or they get, they get in trouble, typically you're allowed to ask about it. But the answer is always, it's an ongoing investigation. I can't really answer anything about it. <laughs> right. So, could be something like that. But we'll see, man. We'll see. It's good news because, again, I think this is the perfect segue. Yes. DC is pushed, as you said off the top of the show, has pushed Shazam 2 to March, I believe. Uh, uh, yes. And then they pushed Aquaman 2 to December of next year. So Correct. Yeah, they held the Flash in, in its spot. So it's. I think it's... I. It, that meeting, I think, was enough to clear the air to make people believe he's gonna, he's gonna walk the straight and narrow for a little bit of time, yeah. and we're gonna be good. So yeah, I guess we'll, I guess I, we'll find out. It, it's, no, it's, I think before we know it. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, you know, it whether or not for for to speak about Shazam uh, or Shazam two and Aquaman two release dates being pushed, I, I we we can't even say for sure if that was really a part of the Miller thing. That mm-hmm. being said. What I know it means is that they are 100% on the train for The Flash to be released. Yes. Uh, that's that's what I know for sure. Yeah. 100%. Like oh, yeah. Zaslav is getting his wish. It's going to be released because, as, as we've talked about before, it's got – I mean, at this point, I want to say it has, like, rave reviews. Like, people are, are – the, the you know, the insiders are really, really excited for this film. Yeah. Like, no other DC film we've ever heard of in terms of uh, early early screenings, you know. Uh, and um, – yeah. I think what that means uh, for Shazam and Aquaman, Shazam Two and Aquaman Two being pushed, is that they're, I they're I think they're going to use this opportunity to film more scenes to, Ooh. and then tie it in with Black Adam. Like yeah. they're, I think this is again this is a part of they want to keep the actors right. They want to keep the actors, and so I think they're going to film some extra scenes to really now make this whole whatever this Black Adam verse yeah. of the Here, DC this this phase of it really question. sing. Here's yeah. the real question. Yeah. Does Ezra, now that we both agree on this, does Ezra stay on as the Flash after this movie? Ooh. <sighs> oh, I mean, shit. That's like, uh, I what do you think? think? Go, go for it. What do you think? I, I don't know. Like, my gut says there's no way a responsible Hollywood exec is going to go, yeah, we're keeping him on. I agree no, with no. that. I think uh, like uh, an exec saying, we get this movie out, you get your paycheck, and that's it. We're done. Uh, but Hollywood is shitty. We we talk about it all the time. Um, so it's a shitty town. It's a shitty place. I I've don't not, know, I, man. Here's what I'll say. They're not going to say it outright right now. They're going to wait right. till the movie comes out and get and we hear the reception. And they're going to wait. They're going to wait for keywords like Ezra Miller was fantastic. Right. Uh, he's the only Flash. We he's he's made mistakes, but he's the only Flash I love. Uh, shit like that. Once uh, they start hearing things like, I mean, because again, the response, like they, smart, at least smart companies hear the they 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 work off response, and if they they at least try to, and especially positive response, they 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 eat that up. So if 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 they happen to go, if we as a public go, you know, we kind of forgive them in in, in a bit, then they're gonna be like, all right, stay on. But it, it, but if but if it's anything below that, I think they'll. I think not. I think they won't. I think they'll. They'll, they'll they'll praise Miller for everything. Like, you know, if he if he gets better and cleaned up, I think they'll do that. But they'll be like, you know, no, we're gonna move this over to another Flash. And thanks for everything, Ezra. But right, and that's it. And then yeah. at the scene here, it's still it's still a win for Ezra because he can he can have his career back and he'll do other things again. Because right. that's right now. It's not we we forget. It's not just the Flash. Like Ezra's career is on the line. <laughs> like it's the, everything about him True. is on the line. But you know, go to that article. That article said. You know, people w- that have knowledge of the meeting said that he is not remorseful for his actions at all, right. which is right. should be a red flag. But um, it's not well, we also, like, but at the same time, time, we don't know the exact details of uh, you know what, that's what happened. Point. We don't know the exact details. I'm not saying I'm, I'm forgiving him. I just we just yeah, don't know. No, I should be burying him because I don't know the right. details. I get it. We just don't. We just don't know. But no, no, no. yeah, it's a it's it's a little interesting about about that. But I mean, I. I I think you can be I think you can both be I think you can both be sorry but not but not be remorseful necessarily of what you've done. Like some people just accept the things that they do. It may not but it doesn't mean that they 
they think it was the best way to handle it. Mm-hmm. But you know, people, but some people just don't have any other a- uh, avenues for for release like that. Some people re- like they really believe for themselves, like that's that's a, that's who I am and that's what I did and that's how I feel like I I responded to it. I'm not saying it's right, but that's how I responded to it. And I can't, you know, I have to have respect yeah. for myself. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. But we'll right. see. You're we right. don't know. Right. Who knows? We'll see, man. Uh, it's we'll see. Interesting. It's interesting. It's yeah. interesting to but, lose. Uh, but but yeah. but, it, but again, in general, though, I feel I do feel I feel good about it. I, all these decisions, all these moves that are being made at WB in terms of DC, I, it's good. Like, yeah, they, I, mean, I think they're making all the right decisions here. I think. What do you think? How I do you feel, feel about like it? They're, re- they're making the right decisions as well. Um, do you want to start talking about the delays? Yeah. Okay. Um, or um, wait, the delays we did already. Do we have anything else to say about it? Because I was going to. Oh, I mean, um, I get not. I mean, again, I am I am I dis what am I disappointed that they moved Shazam to Aquaman two? No, I don't really. I actually it, love that's fine that they moved uh, Shazam two because we have talked about it. We've talked about it since day one of the <laughs> with Avatar twenty twenty two preview. Yeah, uh, yeah. We talked about saying it's going to get absolutely just crushed at into the December box office. Undoubtedly. So, yeah, you would have to move it. You know, again, you can't look. I get a lot of Avatar hate. People always make fun of me for loving the movie as much as I do. Um, fuck them. Yeah, fuck them. Uh, but at you know, at the same time, like that movie's going to make a lot of money, and a lot of people are excited about it. And I guarantee you, if they get the marketing campaign right for that, which mm-hmm. Disney's been fifty fifty lately, lately on marketing campaigns. Uh, but we'll see. Um that it shazam 2 was just going to get buried because it's a, more of a niche character you know sure the first movie got good reviews but it still didn't make a lot of money so uh yeah i love that they moved it to march uh it's a little bit more wide open there doesn't have too much to compete with i believe i, I think it ultimately would be better for it yeah, yeah. for sure uh, i then, think they had to release it at that time because of the other movies around it right i think that's um, really why they had it on that yeah so yeah the, and then the aquaman 2 like I'm like kind of with you. I'm like, meh, whatever. I don't care. Like, good. It's probably, it says it needs more production time. The interesting tidbit, though, is that there are reports, several reports, several different outlets are saying basically Warner Bros., because of the massive acquisition and merger of Discovery Plus, right? $43 billion. Um, <laughs> that they really can only afford to market these tentpole movies twice a year so mm-hmm. you're only going to see two dc movies for twice you know two dc movies a year for the foreseeable future now next year's different you have you know you have shazam uh, the flash and aquaman but after that yeah. You, yeah it starts to go like oh shit but that makes sense because after buying that much and you know assessing that much debt cutting down the marketing time and all that stuff that stuff does matter because you do like we oh. talked about before you have to put in the budget maybe even more to market the film um so right yeah i think that i think that makes a lot of sense um to only go to two dc movies a year especially with marvel doing as much as they are you can be kind of like the opposite like here's what our movies can look like with the time taken and like you really have a massive opportunity in my opinion here to kind of start to make ground on marvel with the two movies uh, a year, not just shoving out shit uh, like every fucking month, you know. I think, yeah, I think they could actually make some ground up here. And um, I don't know. I'm curious to get your thoughts. Um, I think what's I think what WB really forgot is that as much as it makes sense for the for the DC universe to want to catch up to Marvel and their success. I think WB really forgot that, you know, they can make all other films. Marvel Studios cannot do that. You know, like they're they're stuck with Marvel stuff. And I think they could have real I think they should have again, we all said it. Like they don't have to they don't have to try to to catch up. We just want good shit. Yeah. And I think they lost sight of that. I forgot yeah. I think they forgot that like, you know, they're just a studio too and they have other movies to work on and um, yeah, their footing wasn't exactly like Marvel's and they just had to play catch up and they, they don't have to do that anymore. 
And so them them making these moves that show them that that they they they're not even caring about they're not really looking at Marvel and what they're releasing anymore, and they they just want to do what's yeah. best for the DC and not. And that's it. I think is great. I just again, it's it's the the one thing we didn't want was them to keep doing what they were doing. Right. So straight yeah. up. Uh yeah, man, so, I completely agree with that. I think it's- I, I I love it. I'm excited. I'm excited for them. I'm glad that they finally, yeah, uh, you know, got got up from underneath themselves and were like, okay, yeah, no, let, we're done. Let's not, let's restart this. Not everything Zaslav is doing is great, but I think he's making the right decisions with DC. Yes. Um, Overall, Especially, I think he, he has the he has a necessary mentality and attitude about it. I'll yes, say that at knows, the very least, he knows what he wants to do, and I think he's taking in a bunch of different audiences and watching how the world has reacted to stuff and uh, all that kind of stuff. And I think that he understands that because he sat back and watched. He's like, here's what audiences like. Here's what audiences don't like we can lean into what they like and really start to just fix our studio. So, yeah. Um, and again, look, they're, they're pushing out They're They're two years ago. This team was all about streaming. HBO max was getting right. day in day releases. Uh, there's going to be HBO max premieres. All that stuff is pretty much gone. Everything That's gone. Going back to theaters. He yeah. They scrapped, they scrapped it. Faith in the theaters. And that is in my opinion, refreshing. Uh, hundred percent. Look, we're gonna talk about summer, and I have a summer winner for you that might be a little surprising, but, um, but yeah, I yeah, I, I'm sure it will. I like what Zaslav is doing, so yeah, I'm in. And speaking of, you know, again, more good DC. moves and more DC stuff. Uh, the last bit of news here for WB is that um, there's a possible new DC DC chief in the running. Uh, nothing, nothing has been uh, confirmed. Right. Right. However. A a a, per, a man named Dan Lin, an executive turned producer who uh, has worked on hits like Aladdin, The Lego Movie, and Hit. This man right here is apparently uh, one of the top runners for as the Kevin Feige for the DC the DC universe, uh, as told by the Hollywood Reporter. Now, I, to be honest, almost when you hear that name and when you see his picture, no no one knows who he is. Right, yeah. like the general public right. absolutely has no clue who this person is. He's Asian. He kind of looks like me. I think he looks a lot younger than he probably is. He just doesn't look like your typical head person at he all. Looks like you, kind of. Actually, that's what I just said. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you know? Yeah, just he I literally that, just said that. I was looking at a picture and I was like, "No, I heard you say it." And then I was like, oh, "Okay." I was like, "Wait, yeah, he does look like fucking Ed. He looks like an older Ed. That's he weird. totally looks like yeah, like yeah, he could okay. be an older version of me." Get it, um, but Dan Lin, you know, yeah. yeah, Dan Lin. So I mean, again, I mean, I don't know if there's much to say, but the fact that they actually have, you know, a face and a name to uh, this person to take over this really important role. What? Uh, well, how do you feel? What did you? What did you, you feel when you heard first heard the news about Dan Lin? Uh, I had the same reaction pretty much everybody else in the world had. Who the fuck is Dan Lin? <laughs> um, no, yeah, but you know, I looked it up in uh, all the articles. Like you, you mentioned, Hollywood Reporter. Uh, I looked at one at Deadline. Uh, he is uh, very close to Alan Ho- Alan Horn. Horn who is yeah. the current like picture boss at the moment, or he's like creative advisor essentially, and mm-hmm. you know, he's going to work with uh, Dan Lin to stir steer not stir steer the DC ship forward. And I think that's a great choice because hey, you got um. Uh, Two people that need to, they need to be able to work well together. So you have a, you know, you have a former boss and his mentor coming back to work to each other. I don't know how much he likes about he knows about DC or DC Comics. Uh, again, I think that I think comic books have gone absolute shit in recent years. I'm just gonna mm. say it like it has gotten very, very, very political, very stupid. Not that politics are stupid, but. So politics are stupid. Let's be Box honest. are stupid. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you know, comics have taken a, a you know a really really big downfall in recent years, and that's why you see something like the Ripperverse. Uh, he's a guy on YouTube. He started his own uh, publication, and apparently, it's just killing it so far. That's why you nice. see those things kind of take off because 
comics have gotten well as ed's favorite word, word comics have gotten woke uh and it's really hurt them uh so i don't know how much he knows about them but maybe that's not a bad thing maybe he's just gonna stick to the older comics but like dude he's gotten he's got like a ton of tent poles under his belt oh a hundred percent yeah i mean he this is one of these guys yeah yeah, departed sherlock holmes he worked on sherlock holmes Holmes, the lego franchise of movies those things were massive yeah and he's Um, even got tv experience too which is like i think this is a great choice if this is the guy i think it's a great choice i hope he uh can be the kevin feige for dc because they need something to really kind of connect the universes because at this point, it all just needs to be the slate. The slate just needs to be wiped clean. Yeah, I, I agree. So I I agree, and um, you know, I, I think a lot of people are going to wonder, like, well, you know, I think I think the important thing is, like, as you kind of hinted there, is like, does, what's his what's his experience with DC? Like, we know Kevin Feige, like, Love. lives and breathes Marvel. Yeah, like, yeah. ever since he was a kid, and he worked on Spider Man Two or whatever, and Sam Raimi. <laughs> so he had this like rapport, you know. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't seem like Mr. Lin has uh, the same uh, thing. Right. I would assume that maybe might worry people, but I, I, I agree with you. You don't, you don't necessarily need to be the yeah. freaking Star Wars level fan to in order to necessarily put, uh, you know, to to make great great stuff for a franchise. I think it takes intuition in a general sense, and right. he clearly has that. He clearly has has been a part of incredible movies that we've loved behind the scenes and you know now the only difference is, is that he's in the front and so yeah i guess we'll see we don't know i can't say yeah. if it's gonna be great but it's, it's a good move right yeah. like they have a kept they, they they have a kevin feige like yeah, that's that's, that's, that's they, always great just, they have a kevin feige. Stole, literally stole the words from my mouth which you always do but like yeah like they have a kevin feige now if he's the yeah. guy great now you at least have someone there before you know, people are like, oh, it's Zack Snyder. Oh, maybe it's kind of Chris Nolan. It, like, you know, Chris Nolan never wanted to fucking do that. No, <laughs> no, no. Yeah, come on. Do you it's remember that time? They they totally wanted him to be oh, yeah. to be the head. They're like, yeah. yeah, please, please. You you just gave us the Dark Knight. Like, thanks. You need you need to you need to do this. And he's like, nah, I don't I don't really want to. <laughs> yeah. Chris Nolan is like. By the way, Chris Nolan's not a he's not a comic book fan. Like. No, the he doesn't like, know. Did you just no. like totally shit on Dick Grayson? Most people's like top <laughs> sidekick of all time. Man. Robin, like, yeah. yeah. So like so disrespected. He was just like, my movies, Dick Grayson doesn't belong in my movies. <laughs> like I remember he had a quote like that once. So like, yeah. But, I mean, yeah. he was right, but he was right. I mean, right. you see. Okay, okay, really? He was right. And then you put some guy named Drake, whatever, and oh, you should use your middle name. Robin. What was his name? I forgot. What was it? Oh, I forgot okay. it. I can't even remember his name. Yeah. Drake? I think it was Drake. No, I don't think it was. Mm. I actually, de- if anything about The Dark Knight Rises, like, I don't think it's a, a breaker, obviously. But I just, yeah, that wasn't necessary at all. Just, we, just the idea that they, they could have taken out that scene and just shown him at the end taking up the mantle and we could have all just maybe maybe that's robin maybe he's just batman like that, that i think that vagueness would have been better than yeah. that scene where he goes yeah. oh robin that felt that actually felt very un un nolan like yeah, yeah that felt very him uh, you know trying to please comic book lovers and he's never he didn't have to do that ever because he had his own vision and it worked so that scene felt, felt very like okay really nolan like you didn't here's a really? hot take for you if i could never watch the Rises. Dark Knight Wises again, I'd be completely fine. I oh, hated man, that dude. Movie. Oh. I hated that movie. I hated it so much. Like, The Dark Knight right. was amazing, and then The Dark Knight Rises. Maybe you can convince me one day on this podcast. But I, I mean, probably I I don't love it that much that I feel like no. you're wrong or anything. Yeah. I do, I do, I do like it a lot though. I think it's no. still a strong. I think I still think it's a strong film as a film. But if you want to like talk about how it comes up with the dark knight and like all that yeah i can i i'll give it to you like okay. it's definitely nowhere near yeah. the dark knight or batman begins the story is nowhere near as good right. that being said i mean come on i mean bane is great i love the uh, the set pieces are still really strong like there's a lot of moments there that i still think are really great but no i mean i could totally toss the dark knight rises into fire and i'd be okay with it but right. i i would not say the same for the dark knight or batman begins like Absolutely i could not do not. that batman yeah begins. but dark knight rises and yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Like, it's fine. I could even argue with somebody on which is a better movie, Batman Begins or The Dark Knight. 
yeah, uh, I don't but think I could argue that, but I, I, I that somewhat for sure. Film. I'd love to hear that. We should get someone on, on the podcast who could probably argue for for it. Yeah, because I, I don't, I don't think you're wrong. I just, I just like the Dark Knight better, and I, but I just don't think you're wrong. But it'd be nice to have someone who feels like you're actually wrong. Like, From, oh fuck uh, you, Batman <laughs> is nowhere near as good as the Dark Knight. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. Got to get somebody yeah. that can like. Uh, I totally get it. Debate us since we yeah. agree so much. Casting uh, call anybody, anybody who just well, actually, who I feels going to agree with my She Hulk too episodes. My my episode two. Oh right? yeah, really? Uh, we haven't talked well, then, about it. Well then, speaking of oh, great oh, transition, what a transition! Let's Is yeah, what a transition! That's it. Let's. Yeah, I think that's it. Is there anything else on uh, Dan Lin? Nope, that's I think it. that's it. Yeah, yeah I think that's pretty much it. Let's see what he does. Oh, I mean, well, he's not he's not official yet. I just want to make that no, sure. Right. <laughs> that he right. it's 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 speculation, but we'll we'll see. Okay. Um, anyways, let's move on then to our review section of our today's show. And let's talk She-Hulk episode two. We'll start off with She-Hulk episode two, and then we'll move on to our little summer recap. But let's start off with She-Hulk episode two. Um, and just to give a little recap about our feelings about She-Hulk so far with episode one last week, we talked about it. I think we were both like not it's super. Fine. It's fine to I didn't like it for sure. <laughs> You, yeah, you more, I, you've been more on the I don't like this. Yeah, and the more that I the more that I think about it, the more I'm like it, it keeps melting. I I I I don't I don't like I don't like the episode. I don't yes. and that 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 mo- her monologue irks me irks me irks me more and more every time I try to reason it out. Uh, I don't like I just you know so I, but we can, we don't have to keep going. I actually episode. agree, yo. Oh monologue, yeah, this, uh, yeah. Remember, yeah? I was I was a proponent. I was like, hey, that's not completely false when she's talking about it, and then no, it's not. I started to think about it and think about it and i'm like oh fuck i guess but talk but again you have to put it in terms of who who she's, she's fucking talking, talking to. to right it's who she's talking to yes. if she was talking to your best friend okay yeah i mean that that seems like a natural conversation to have and i would yeah. probably give it like like yeah okay you, you would say those things to your best friend whatever right but she's talking to fucking bruce right. the hulk the guy that and, put a bullet in his head <laughs> And the other guy spit the yeah. shell out. Like, what do you mean? You I have it harder than you. Than, no, you don't have it harder than him. You have no. No, you don't. Like, yeah. See, that's the thing that really bothers me is that she said, "I have, I do it." What, what did she say? I have it. I do it. I hold my anger in infinitely, infinitely more, than more than you, or have it hard. She's insinuating that it, it's harder for her. Like, I'm like, no, it wasn't. Yeah. Like it just, it just wasn't, Jennifer. Yeah. Uh, and what? then fucking Hulk's just there going like this. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll have to talk about some point. Fuck not you. today, but at some point, the character assassination Marvel has pulled on the Hulk. It's uh, been kind of character assassinating a lot of our old friends in favor of uh, these new ones uh, in their sort of woke. Weird. Dis- Even Captain America. It's gross for, you know, Anthony Mackie and like, don't get me wrong. I like the choice of Anthony Mackie being. Captain I do, America. too. I don't. I, I do, too. I have, do I think Bucky is a better fit? Kind yes. of, but I can understand why this is the right choice. You know, hey, and Bucky's still around. And in the I don't get it. In the comics, it yeah. that happens. So and that's fine, like, you know. Yeah, like the character assassinations of all these characters in favor of newer characters, it's just not the way to do it. Of course uh, not. Um, but that's not of course a topic not. for today. Let's not topic for that's, today. That's it's not a topic uh, for today. We can have a She-Hulk <laughs> <laughs> retrospective once it's all done. Because I'm sure there once will be all. more. You know what? Uh, you know what speaking I'm looking of. forward to the most in Italy? What's that? I don't have to watch She-Hulk for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> this is the guy that was like i just want me some daredevil let's where's the daredevil cameo oh yeah but i think you're only saying that to be fair uh, because episode two mm-hmm. which came out this past week didn't help mm-hmm. even a little bit i think right. uh so why don't we delve into episode two a little bit here and i'll just give a quick recap of the app uh so in episode two it's basically jennifer she loses her 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 job at the her her last firm uh, because uh, you know she's a bit of a liability because she's She Hulk and press would be horrible. She may not be winning a lot of her cases because she's She Hulk. Okay, great, fair enough. Uh, she spends about thirty seconds uh, not having a job, and then she gets a job. She's given a job at a new firm. I forget the name because who cares? Uh, but they want her to take the important thing is that they wanted her to take up a case uh, with uh, Emil Blonsky, who is the 
the, who was the villain in the Incredible Hulk, uh, yeah. the the Edward Norton film. Uh, <laughs> but again, Edward Norton and uh, Mark Ruffalo are playing the same person. So whatever. Uh, so it's it's also happened to Mark Ruffalo. And so yeah, she has to now deal with this case where uh, you know the abomination tried to kill her cousin. And she need, now needs to defend Emil Blonsky. She visits Emil Blonsky, who is in prison, that same prison we saw in um, uh, Shang Chi, Shang Chi for a little, little, little bit of a spec. Yeah. And she basically, after that, goes to um, Bruce asking if she should take the case, and Bruce says yes. So well, that's. Uh, or go ahead. She did I, did I mess that up? Sorry, go well, ahead. Well, she says she's going to take. She calls Bruce to let him know she's already decided to take the case. She didn't. Oh, ask okay, him right. For his or case. she didn't. Correct. They, no. I'm so, no <laughs> women don't have to ask him. Yeah, no, in this world, they don't ask anything. You're anymore. right. I'm. So, I am so sorry. They don't. Yeah, you're right. Women don't need to ask for permission. Fuck they just. Off. Uh, they yeah. just do whatever the hell they want. That's yeah. fine. Uh, that means. I mean, she at least called them. So that's that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> anyways okay so that's that's a recap of uh, she hulk episode two again i'll I'll start with you alex but overall i mean again just for me i just it's i know what the show is now and um if it's any indication of like the 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 quality of the the writing and 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 the lack of or the lack of writing or the lack of screenplay i i i'm just i'm i'm not i'm I'm getting off the the wagon now a little bit and so anyways let's start with you what so what did you think of episode two how did it make you feel and so to start, I didn't hate episode two, actually. Okay. I was like, oh, you know what? This is fine. Um, part of me has accepted what the show is. Like you just said. Good, good um, for you. The sh- <laughs> no, I, but seriously, I just um, want you to, if, as long as you're enjoying it, then no, that's all well, I care about. I don't know if I'd say I'm enjoying it. Oh, okay. Uh, there's, <laughs> there's been parts where I laughed, like, um, you know, the where Josh Segura, by the way, Josh Segura, I believe that's his name. The guy who comes in and says, here's a map of where to poop, the cleanest bathroom or quietest bathroom of where to poop. I laughed at the that wi- The white dude? The white yeah, friend? Yeah, yeah, I don't know who Josh Segura is. he a comedian? I don't know who he is. No, that's Tom Segura. No, Josh no, no. Segura. I know, but I'm just saying, like, I don't, you, you, you say his name like I, I oh, like he's, people he's should know him. the white dude who comes in. He's got the beard and says, I'm also in the superhero division. But he's not like some big actor that I, I, I think I, I missed or anything. So oh, okay. You just happen to know role, his name. <laughs> his biggest role, Josh Segura, if you don't know who he is. No offense, Josh. Prometheus on Arrow season five or six. I oh. can't remember which one. But season five of Arrow is the greatest season of all time because of him. He plays wow. this guy who you think is a friend, then you find out he's the bad guy. Spoiler alert. So sorry. Ooh. And he has the greatest line I've ever heard spoken in any villain ever. He Hit literally me. looks at Oliver Queen, Stephen Amell, and goes, I'm 10 steps ahead, and you haven't even figured out what game we're playing yet. And I was like, damn, that is fucking sick. Uh, I like that. The whole reveal was crazy. Like, yeah. So he was this really, really kind of menacing guy. I like that. Dude, that was the CW. That is the best written line the CW has ever had. But this reminds me of a CW show. (laughs) What a (laughs) sign. Oh, no. Like, There's parts I like. And you're like, okay. Just, you know, to you know, give credit to CW, I stuck with the Flash for like four or five seasons. Um, until That's like pretty good, man. Basically, until I realized they're never gonna let Barry be the fucking hero in this show. It's always gonna uh... be Barry. Never saved the day in any of any of the seasons. It was always really? his best friend or his wife Iris saved the the day one time. It's just like why, why, why can't you just let Barry be Barry? That's what this show is. Mm. Um, with that said, I didn't totally hate the episode. Uh, I do think there's more bad editing uh, when they're at the th- when they're at the dinner table, which we got called out for. It, which one guy thinks he's like, oh, it literally doesn't break the 180 rule. If you change directions in a shot without being composed, you breaking the 180 rule. It's not like, right. oh, it's just 180. No, no, it's more than that, bro. Yeah, like you don't know where the action is, which means you don't know where you're looking at. That's breaking yeah. the 180 rule. Your orientation's off. Yeah, Your completely. Your orientation's off. You, you're going this way in one shot, and then the next you're going this way. You don't know what yeah. the fuck's happening. That's breaking the 180 rule. Right. But I digress. Fuck you. Anyway. Uh, anyway. No, some of the comments were pretty funny. Uh, anyway. They're pretty funny. Yeah. It's, anyway. com- it's a comment section. So, like, there's, there's this scene when they're all at the dinner table. They're yeah. all sitting there. She has her jacket on the entire time, and... 
uh, the final shot of the scene, the jacket's off and the shirt kind of looks different. And I'm just like, this is more poor execution. And that to me is the biggest problem. Uh, yeah. Like I, when I say that, when I, when I call out bad editing or anything like that, I just mean that Marvel's been so good at something for so long and they've really, really, you know, crossed their T's and dotted their I's and really followed through on stuff. And on this show, it just doesn't feel like it. they're even trying. They're just in cruise control going down. And that's my biggest problem with this show is that it's lazy. Like, the execution is lazy. Um, you know, like, she has that whole inner monologue. Uh, and this is coming from someone that didn't hate the episode, by the way. So mm, mm -hmm. she has the whole inner monologue where she goes, oh, God, you're going to think I only got this job because I'm She-Hulk. You did only get yeah, this job that's, because you're She-Hulk. That's literally it. Yeah, like that's the thing. Like, yeah, yeah, th yes, that's you, that's why you got the job, lady. Uh, uh, so, I understand you want to be grumpy about it. Grumpy is probably not the right word, but you're going to be grumpy about it. So, like, either you could the writers at that moment in time, Ed, could have the chance to say, "Hey, I'm going to quit. I'm going to make my own way." But she doesn't. She takes the job. She takes yeah. the easy way out. Like, or, you know, you could have some sort of other in a monologue or saying that I'm going to prove myself that I right. didn't, that even though I did get this job because of this, I will be the greatest lawyer they've ever seen. But you don't get right. that. No, you know, it's just, I don't know. This is coming from someone that didn't hate the episode. I didn't hate the episode. I had some funny moments in it. Um, oh, oh. Bruce is off to Sakaar. That's effing epic. So this um, World War Hulk thing might be happening. World War Hulk, huh? I think, is happening. Uh, <laughs> I hope it's as great as it can be, and I hope, as I said, the character assassination on Hulk stops here. Um, I hope it does, but we'll see. But that, other than that, my overall thoughts was it was a fine episode of ABC television. Hey. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's what it was. It's a fine episode of ABC television. Y you have to put yourself in the mindset that this is a 30-minute sitcom. Uh, it's not trying to be a Marvel product. Uh, again, the thing that bugs me the most about it is the execution. It's just yeah. poorly executed in almost every facet, and that is where I can't get on board with it as much. Um, but you go. No, you, I couldn't. I really didn't like it. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't. I don't. I continue not to care for this. I, I I want to keep playing my apathy card towards it because, again, you you put it correctly. I I think it's just poor filmmaking. Like it's not a show. I don't feel like it's a show. It's just a message that needs to be translated into a bunch of scenes. Yeah, and <laughs> yes, that dude. that like that's the medium they were forced to do it. Yes. You know, like that's how it feels like. All dude, that's wait. I'm going to let you go, but before you okay. do, yeah, doesn't no, it ahead, feel like this show was meant to be like all these writers got into a room and they really wanted to do a funny uh, comedy about a lawyer uh, living in the 21st century and they could never get the show on board, but somehow, some way, <laughs> like, oh, fuck, we got hired to this Marvel show. We're just going to do that. Doesn't it feel right. like that? Ah, uh, absolutely, hundred yeah. percent. The right, the writer, every, every, all the the upper filmmakers involved are. I feel like they're writing for a, di a completely different project. Yeah, and it just happens to be that She Hulk really kind of fits what they uh. wanted to do. And um, yeah, a hundred percent. Again, the film. I just, I don't see, I don't see a filmmaking here at all on almost mm -hmm. any level. And on top of that, the writing can't even uh, show up to to the gate. Uh, to even be be there uh, that to, in a sense in a way that makes sense at all or or to be in, at the very least interesting i mean again what happens in this episode she okay it makes sense it makes absolute sense that she loses her job because she could be a liability that's that's actually makes a lot of sense and that's crushing that's crushing for her yeah. to 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 have to put up with that that sucks because all she wanted to be was a was a lawyer all she said in episode one is i don't yeah. want to be a hulk i want to be a lawyer, be a lawyer. Right. so that whole thing is great and i thought that made sense right but it gets it gets rebounded in like literally like two minutes <laughs> like li like she, there's like a short montage where she tries to go to other law firms and like you know she's down in her luck, and yeah. then the next scene she goes to a bar, and then like a, a like another firm just offers her a job, gives gives her a job. They even fact they want her, and yeah. the 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 trick here is that okay, they want her because she's She Hulk, right? 
fine, fair enough. That's also like a little like dicky. Uh, but again, <laughs> on, on a narrative, on a, sorry, you're drinking water. On a narrative level, that sucks. But okay, but yeah. at least it's a dick move. But then what does she do? She keeps it. She she willingly keeps it. She doesn't yeah. even have. She doesn't even say anything in that moment of like, excuse me. Like she should have. St- you want to talk about strong, independent woman? She should have stopped him right there and be like, look, I'm not. I'm not for this. I mean, again, in the last episode, she was bitching about it. She was bitching about how she doesn't want to be She-Hulk. This guy literally serves it to her on a silver platter, uh, exactly what she didn't want. And right. she says nothing. She says nothing. Like, how are I supposed to get behind this character? She doesn't make the, any right decisions or anything or at all. Like, she just doesn't even – she's just there. Right. So, it, so uh, it's decisions like that where I'm just like, I don't like watching you. You're you're a weird person, Jennifer. You don't deserve the the whole the, like this mantle at all. That's the thing. And so why am I watching you? Right. I don't understand why I'm watching you. So you said something brilliant right there. I you don't deserve this power at all. And that's the thing. Like that's where we're at currently. Obviously, we're only two episodes in. Don't come after us. We get it. But if <sighs> It just feels like the origin was just just messed up from yeah. the get go. Uh, and right. the critical drinker, uh, if you don't know who he is, go subscribe to his oh, channel. Oh God, he's just but one of the best. He, he released, and again, the critical drinker. He's an author. He's a writer. Uh, and by the way, brilliant man. For editors with combined twenty something years of experience of editing under our belts. So when we criticize something called the one eighty rule or bad composition, we do know what we're talking about. We're not just saying it because we're jerks. Um, but, you know, the Critical Drinker released a video that basically said it's a lesson in bad writing. And you've essentially, to, you know, double down on that, they've created an insanely unlikable character. Yes. And you feel so bad unlikable. for uh, Tatiana Maslany because Tatiana Maslany, because she's doing a hell of a job. She's giving it her all. Absolutely. I love her. She's doing, she's still doing a great job acting. But I, I just, just don't like her fucking yeah. Yeah, like the 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 dialogue is bad, the editing is bad, everything is just really poorly executed. And again, after what are we, 12 years into the MCU now at this point, it's something you expect to be good. You like we should be expect we shouldn't be saying, hey, this is bad yeah. because it's poorly executed. Like that should be the last of the problems. I agree. Um, and yeah, that's that's where I'm at with the show. Like, it is clearly that these writers were writing for some other show, and they somehow, some way, just landed on She-Hulk. Um, I don't really know where the show goes. Um, I was talking about this. Uh, yeah, no shit. With uh, another good friend of mine, and I said, "Here's my biggest worry about the show. Where are we going? What's yeah. the point? What's the purpose?" She's gonna like you can't look like, it's not it's not Allie McBeal, y'all. Like <laughs> like there's not gonna be 26 episodes of this show where she just has a bunch of adventures. There has to be a through line through line story here. You only have a finite amount of episodes and it's only one season. Maybe it gets uh maybe it gets renewed for a second season. I don't really see that happening. I don't know. But I, where are we going? You know, like I don't understand what it's going to be just yet and i think that's where i'm my biggest like trip up with the show is happening i can accept that it's poorly executed no i can accept that it's badly written i can't accept that it's poorly executed that does right bug me. i will always complain there about poor execution right um but yeah like where are we going there's like there's no villain there's no uh Really, yeah, those stories. There's no anything yet. Like- we see Tati, we see a we see this fucking bitch drive through a wall in a jag like a cheetah outfit, and, and she's not even mentioned in the second episode at all. Right. Like she's, she gets like this like 10 second intro about this. She's an, a f- superhero influencer, I believe is what they call her. Sure, yeah. But like what? Uh, Why did y'all just drop that in the second episode? Like, she's literally not mentioned at all. Can I I rant for you for a second here? Of course. Poor writing here. Uh, Have you ever, ever, go back to our two screen. Have you ever (laughs) 
called a woman an it. An it? It. Like, like with the no. Yes, because they're in the bar when they're in the doing their bar scene. Oh, there's a oh, pretty yeah. girl over there. Let me I'm go talk, talk to it. it. Yeah, that dude. First of all, I want to. I went to Arizona State University. Everybody, probably the one of the most sexist colleges in the world. Yes. I have never. In all the group friends I've been around, I've never heard a man call a woman an it. Like me either. This is this screams like women who actually don't go outside of their homes and uh, don't get hit on. That I shouldn't say that. That's awful yeah. to say. But this is yeah. what it screams. Yeah, like, I agree. I bad writing. I agree. I don't. I. 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 I mean, that was an atrocious thing for that person to say. But I didn't. I've literally never heard anyone in my life ever <laughs> talk to a woman that way i'm not saying it doesn't happen right but it's really not that relatable <laughs> it's like i'm sorry but i'm like yeah, okay like if you're hanging out in a bar yeah i guess no, like sure I've never said that no, maybe never if someone's around, i understand yeah again i i've been under i've been around questionable people in my life i still haven't heard someone do would, say something so demeaning than that and it was on a fucking disney show i don't know it's weird dude, but go ahead, I, keep was going. On, I was about to say we have a friend who uh you know is a bit of a dick but even he wouldn't say <laughs> it like what what there's no way that's an actual thing that's happening in the world. I, I don't think it here, – here's what I'll say. I don't think it's – again, maybe we're mansplaining at this point. Fuck it. <laughs> like I don't think it's that widespread enough where everyone's looking around going like, what the fuck? Is that like a – that's like a real thing? Like people – like it's – of course, like uh, some one fucking ass fuck is going to say that. But is it really – is it really like I don't know? It just doesn't seem yeah, like is that pandemic. like seriously a worry we have? Yeah, it's I don't so think it is, weird, man. It's just a yeah. weird. Yeah, it like thing. I understand if it like bothers you, but it, if you're tr again, if you're using it to build character development or something in a show, it's just not that interesting. It's like just not compelling enough. Like, again, and this goes back to the last week with the whole the cat calling thing. Yeah. Look, I've never been cat called before. Okay, but. If you're putting that in place of a sentence that ends with, you know, I've, I've survived worse than you. If catcalling is the worst thing you've ever, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, but. Says the guy who got his ass kicked by a purple alien. And that's what I'm saying. Like, like yeah, like, you like you, you're, you're, you're like, a pussy, like for yeah. real, <laughs> like um, not even because not because you're a woman, you're just a pussy like in life, like get over it. <laughs> sorry man, get know, over man. life's so much harder than that bro like if she she could have literally almost thought of any other difficult story yeah. than that to throw at bruce banner they've done it's just so poor they've done so much to not build up this character and we've talked about this you and i talked about this <laughs> that's a great recently. sentence what you just said they, they've, they've done worked. so much to not build this character, it it's, it's worked that's, hard to do that's hilarious. nothing toward character development. That's so here. that's hilarious. That's like, funny. Look, again, it's ne it's another... next level, uh, like negligence. <laughs> it's like just next level. Here's another character, brand new to the MCU, who is perfect, can control all the powers, and has no problems. Now, what other characters does that sound like off the bat? And she's yeah. only going to get better from here. Yeah. Okay, I know. like it's not it's there's a fucking pattern and it's not there's a pattern. There's a not, pattern. It's not us being sexist because that's the immediate no. response. It's us saying, hey, listen, flawed characters, I will say it for the hundredth time and I'll say it through every single episode of this season. Flawed characters are better than perfect characters. Right. It's just that simple. Um yeah. I will <laughs> uh, man. Uh I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can keep going, but it, again, I think we've said I think we've said our piece about yeah. what's wrong with the show, and like you know, like, wo woke or not, or writing or feminism or whatever. Than She Hulk, <laughs> you yeah. had a distinct style and it was executed yeah. well. And, I guess you know, hey, I, it's not for me, but I'd rather watch that than this. Yeah, uh, I mean, at this at, th at this point, that's yeah. coming from someone Under. that didn't hate the second episode. I know. I can, I can, I mean, let's see where it goes. As always, let's see 
where it goes uh if it gets any better but i highly doubt it it's just pretty clear what the writers had for this character for this show yeah and they're gonna keep pushing it for nine episodes yeah. i mean whatever i i probably will not tune in um and that's fine whatever I mean, it's just yeah. not for me i don't I'll have be, to complain about it I'll just don't watch it next week i'll watch it next week i'll watch the week after then two weeks yeah. i'm gone um yeah out of the country out of mind i'm not gonna be worrying about she hulk i'm gonna be you know eating gelato and pizza <laughs> early so Maybe I'll watch them for you. No, no, because you're going to text me and you're going to say, and it's going to annoy you more. All I'm going to talk about is other things besides She Hulk. Tell you what, you can text me anything besides She Hulk. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. I think that's it. And I watch it, then I'll complain to you. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Before we move Um, on here, actually, let's let's really quickly talk about you know the the centerpiece of the episode, which I I, is is the, the the Emil Blonsky. Uh, mm-hmm. scene i just want to get your quick thoughts on that like how did you how did you find emil and his his whole new namaste you know like thing do you believe him do you I what do you think is happening do believe him because i think they're gonna neuter abomination completely and totally uh one right. of the greatest Dis- uh disney one of the greatest marvel villains and i think abomination will hot take i think abomination will take the place of red hulk on the avengers oh really oh uh, mm. sorry on the avengers on um the thunderbolts which mm. is getting its own movie. It seems like, look, here's the perfect guy that can take the place of him. Um, so maybe he becomes that. Red Hulk. Yeah, yeah. you're right. But maybe. I do. Yeah. I do actually enjoy. He does. If it wasn't so comedic, there was like a good line kind of dropped in there where he says, "I didn't want to take the serum; they forced right. it on me." Which is, which would be an interesting, interesting narrative to at least look into and uh, kind of dive into. They won't do it, but. There was something interesting in there. Uh, how'd you- yeah. So, okay, the interesting about Emil, and you brought it up, like, is he he he's basically painting this picture, like, you know, he's a he's a bit of a victim too, and that that's pretty interesting. Again, maybe it's for the trial. He mentioned the super serum and how he was forced onto him, but was it though? Was it wasn't it? forced onto him. No, he he. I remember, I remember he wanted it because he had something to prove. So that's where it gets interesting, right? Yeah. Maybe he's lying. Do but at the same time, you're right. Yeah. Oh, I, oh, you. Oh, maybe I mean, there's more to it. Maybe they've sort of re retroactively done something here. Maybe. I mean, I think they could the totally frame Thunderbolt Ross as the bad guy here. Um, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. I. I don't know. We'll. We'll find out, or I'll find out. I'll finish the show. You won't probably. I mean, <laughs> again. I want Daredevil too, so I'm probably. Gonna, I'm just waiting for that. If Daredevil comes in and he's absolutely like just this neutered character that's terrible, oh bro I will bro. I think you would actually have a problem amongst Marvel fans. Mm, yeah, no, they, we talked about this before too. Like the the whole idea. Now I'm really just worried. I'm super worried about what how how does Daredevil play in this new proposed yeah. MCU where mm. it feels a little woke because I mean this this whole te- this new team that he might be. I'm not saying he's leading it, but it's not. I hope he fucking does because that'd be dope. Uh, I, hey, I feel like he's going to be playing in a different, way different ball game, a neutered ball game than he was playing in the Daredevil we l- know and right. love. And where so where does this go? I mean, remember again if you want to talk about fucking broken people, this motherfucker's blind. He lived in Hell's Kitchen. Like and he's been his ass, he got his ass kicked a bunch of times. Like he feels probably more pain than any other superhero. Physical pain. It's gonna be and, so weird. And then what? And this Jennifer Walter is gonna come up to this guy and be like, "I I hold my anger better than you, bitch." Like like how does that work? What is this world that we are living uh, in now? Dude, it's gonna where, be uh, very very weird to see how it goes through. Um, again, I I have something interesting that we have to talk about with Phase Four, but we can mm. hold that for another okay. week. Okay, so, let's hold uh, it. Especially because you know we got Black Panther coming out, but Black Panther feels like it's going to be the one. Sorry, the second true knockout of the Phase Ice Phase Four. I I hope so. Based on trailer, trailer one, looks good. Based on. <laughs> Based on one trailer. one single trailer, and yeah, one single I mean, trailer that was probably the best edited trailer I've ever seen. But in my life. we've seen amazing trailers that have uh, given shit movies. So yeah, I mean, yeah. I, 
I still have uh, my hype somewhat down, but man. All right, yeah, I agree. We'll all see. right, let's 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 jump into uh, the last little recap of summer. How's that? Sound? Let's do it. Yeah, let's talk a little bit the summer. It's the end yeah. of the summer now. It's the end of August, uh, beginning of September, and that means we've had the last four months to sort of digest and watch all uh, that the summer had to give us and bless us with, movie wise. Yeah. Um, let's. So uh, let's. Uh, once you, once you, you, you kind of brought this up, topic up. So why don't you, once you, uh, set it up for us and like, yeah, uh, what the, let's what the talk talk about, will be about the summer recap, guys. It's about to be. We. It's August twenty eighth. Uh, it's basically the end of September, Labor Day. That's the end of summer for box office concerns. Um, I want to talk to you, Ed, really, honestly, about two things: winners and losers. <laughs> uh, and we can keep this super short, um, be, but you know we can each give one winner. We can each give one loser. Okay. Um, or you know if you have a surprise, go ahead. Uh, You're talking but, movies and TV, or just movies? It could be all, everything, everything, my man. Everything. everything that anything that just came out. Okay. So I'll go first with my winner. Uh, my winner, <laughs> and I I criticized them way earlier this year. Uh, I said they're basically Kodak that they're gonna go extinct. <laughs> they're not. But my winner Whoa. is Netflix. Uh, wow. What? My winner is Netflix. You gave us. What the fuck? First, to start off, summer, you kicked off summer basically with Stranger uh, Things, which was, in my opinion, one of the best shows I've seen this year. It's, in terms of storyline, it's the same story over and over and over again. However, there is not a show out there that's executed and produced yeah. and w- as well done as Stranger Things. And it was season four specifically. Yeah, season four. And yeah. it was like, geez, man, I miss it's good. shows like this. They they took their time. They got it right. <laughs> oh, it is really, really good. I loved it. Um, and then on top of that, you gave us The Gray Man, which we both kind of loved for what it is. Oh, and it's then great. You gave us Day Shift. Which was Day Shift was like Blade, but with a comedy tone, dude. I yeah, it's loved, fine. Yeah, it's good. I, I liked Day it. Shift. I thought it was great. You know, like for what it was. Again, it knows it, what it was. There is some. There's something to be said about movies that know what they are and have no problem I agree. being that. So to me, my winner of summer is <sighs> is of is Netflix. I Absolutely. would I would not have said that earlier, but they had a fantastic summer. These movies are great. These movies were fun. They gave us like dumb action stuff that I really enjoyed. Um, if I had to pick up runner up, it would probably be uh I mean it'd probably be the terminal list. I thought that show was I still haven't great. seen it. Still haven't that seen show it. was incredibly another show well executed, well done. It takes a minute to get into Chris Pratt's performance because it's Chris Pratt like you've never seen him before. Mm. So it takes a second to get into it. But however, that so you're saying he's he's not great. <laughs> no, no, he gets he, he's not great to start. He out, gets there. He, he gets, gets there. He gets there. He gets much okay. better. He gets much better. And then don't believe the critics, folks. He's not like this ridiculous. It's not this um it's not this ridiculous like nonsense that has been reviewed, like it's right wing nonsense. No, no. Give the show a shot. It's actually really well and it's really well executed. It's done very, very well. Um, actually I can give my runner up to prime, you know, uh, I loved Reacher. I saw it over the summer. It was one of the best shows I've seen this year. I wow. enjoyed Reacher over, um, Terminalist. Let me catch uh, that. It's so, so, so well done. Again, it's, we always scream here. Stop worrying so much about the message. Stop worrying about so much about telling a succinct, you know, uh, narrative that you need to push. No, just tell a story and the rest will come to it. Right. And, uh, and make sure it's led by white males. That please, that's, whoa, that's whoa, what whoa, it needs to whoa, be. You know whoa, what I'm saying? Whoa, oh, I'm that, sorry. I thought, I thought, the, Oh, I'm so, daybreak. Wasn't daybreak. Day shift. Wasn't led by white males. <laughs> Ed. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, fair fair enough. enough. You're right. Thanks for calling me out though, bro. The, the, uh, the one day shift. <laughs> serious drama. I just, realize that's what i did uh anyway <laughs> you go now with your yeah, boy go yeah, ahead no, i'm fucking with you um <laughs> so okay so you mean so i mean okay hold on now i feel like now i feel like i need to give something better than the obvious or like more than the obvious though because I, I think there's a no, no, no. there's some I, obvious winners i for the held back my obvious winner because i knew it's a good one though. obvious winner was go yeah. ahead <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you, because there's Do really it. no other option. There's really me. no other option. I watched it twice this I w- week. I've watched it. Me too. <laughs> I just watched it yesterday, it and then Come I watched on. it this morning. It's fucking Morbius. No, I'm no. just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh god, uh, no, it's uh, okay. <laughs> Top Gun Maverick. I mean, come on. Is there a bigger win in the last, I don't even know how long ever? It's, uh, you know, it's Top Gun Maverick. It just came out on digital Digital. the other day. I've watched it twice, like you already. (laughs) And I just can't stop watching it. I swear to you, it's funny, uh, Keisha. I put it on. She didn't even, she hasn't, but mind you, she hasn't watched it yet, by the way. No, she hasn't seen it. My wife hasn't watched it yet. Okay. Uh, See? Yeah, uh, it's, uh, we should have them watch it. That'd be fun. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I had she hadn't watched it. She just saw like she heard it blaring on because I love watching movies really loud. <laughs> and she's like, and she she knew exactly what movie I was watching. She's like, seriously, again? And, and she's like, is this like your fucking fifth time? I'm like, no, it's like my seventh or eighth. And she just <laughs> gave me that. She just gave me that look. She just gave me that fucking look. Um. But anyways, what my point is. Uh, I love it. Uh, it's it's climbed the char- It's continuing to climb the charge. Um, it's it's just past that again. It passed Infinity War. I mean, it's just doing bonkers. And yeah. how could how could I mean? If there was a W, a poster ch- child for the, for the W term uh, for modern uh, you know terminology. It should be it should be Top Gun Maverick. Yes, yeah. There's just uh, it's just no thing. There's just nothing else we, that we, just dominated dominated chat on everything and i would even if there was competition for the movie even if there even though it's been a dry a bit of a dry summer it's still i, I still i'm confident it still would have it still would have dominated yeah. it's just that good um, it's just that good so yeah like we've talked at nauseam about this film i had a whole yeah it's exactly poetic moment about it about how just well it's executed and it took the time that movies don't take the time to anymore um it's just it's just fantastic it still remains like i would say it's probably the top two movies that and everything everywhere all at once um, obviously yes those obviously. two movies but again those two movies are the same for a lot of reasons that people don't realize there's no yeah there's no message there's no anything they're telling a right. story that they want to tell that's what they set out to do and they execute it well and they make you laugh they make you cry they make you feel all these things man and uh right that's why those movies are great and that's what movies are supposed to be um yeah. and we've forgotten that uh so yeah i think that i i Preach. knew what you know i knew what your winner was gonna be uh i that's all that's why i took netflix i knew because i because i know our it's, loser you, is gonna be the same thing uh <laughs> so uh what a segue uh, do, do you do you know i mean there have been a few losers uh do you do you think we'll have the same loser the loser for me is marvel studios <laughs> Yeah, Marvel Studios I think, I think this you're gonna say that. has just absolutely uh, the. Uh, movie. I still enjoyed Multiverse of Madness, but on terms of what I was expecting, I was just let down in an in insane amount. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I yeah, yeah. Uh, I agree with you. I, I agree with you. To to that point, uh, I would watch Multiverse of Madness on repeat till the day I die if I had a choice between Multiverse of Madness or Thor: Love and Thunder. Thor: Love, Thor, Love and Thunder. Thunder was one of the worst Marvel movies I've ever seen. Uh, I, I I think very so. Bad. It was really bad. It was poorly executed. It had poor effects. It had some of the worst GFX work I've ever seen in my life. Um, would you yeah. rather watch it over Thor two? No, I'd rather watch Thor two, any day, many time. Not even Damn. close. I, I did not enjoy one. that movie at all. Uh, Thor I don't know which one I'd rather mess, watch. Man. It's so, it's so disjointed. It's so bad. You basically you, it lacked any sort of semblance of a story. Uh, yeah. Any sort of semblance of a point. Uh, it's the exact opposite of Top Gun Maverick. It had no idea what it wanted to be, so it was everything all yeah. at once, and it just yeah. Sucked. Yeah, it was like MCU vomit. It was just yeah, like, like it, that's exactly little, it. That's like a regurgitation. Really yeah. That um, was just, yeah, you look at it and you go like, oh, MCU that's vomit. weird. MCU vomit. That's yeah. A wonderful way to put it. Uh, and then it's just true. For me, uh, Miss Marvel wasn't for me. Um, TV shows weren't hitting again, it. Again, like, yo, I get it. It was made for teenage girls, so I'm not going to hit on it too much. Um, and yeah. She Hulk hasn't been great. 
Marvel's products over the last year have just been very, very, very suspect. Um, that's a that's a really good yeah. yeah if if very, anything, that's a great term to use. It's suspect. so hit or miss. It's sus. Insane. Yeah, it's sus. sus. It's so it's so hit or Where miss. Where the fuck are you guys that. doing right now? Yeah, like um, I feel like we're all just trying to put on a fake smile. Yeah. Hoping that like oh yeah yeah this it's gonna get better. It's gonna get better. This, this is what I want. Coming. Yeah right. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> fuck, <laughs> this is bad. Yeah no. Um. So yeah. So yeah. That's that's where I land. Marvel Studios is my loser of summer 2022. It hurts. It hurts to say. Who who would have thought we'd ever say that? It does hurt. Like who? It does hurt. Marvel has only ever won. And in right? and honestly, in in a lot of light, in a lot of light, it still technically is winning. Like you know, we're 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 only part of the uh, we're of still the people watching who. It. Who don't like it, but yeah. there's all, but there's a again critics. There's some critics who continue to fight for these movies. I mean, you know, it's not they're not doing horrible. It's not that they're fighting for it. Let's be honest. To call out, uh, all yeah. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, no. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be as critics, your nice fuck. about it as no. I can. You want to keep your screeners. You want to keep your access, and you know a bad review will end it. You know, yeah. that because we've experienced it. We won't go into details, but we've experienced. They will take away your early access to things if you don't think something's good or if you don't give it a favorable review. They will take it away. We know a yeah. studio that's infamous for doing it. Uh, so we're not going to talk about that. But No, I um, agree. And and fair enough, you know, like fair enough. Uh, that's their livelihood. I, I, I know we're hard on critics, yeah. but and we should be yeah. uh, at the same time. I, it's not like I don't understand. Like I, I get why you're doing it. That being said, I'm going to call you out when you do it. Same Agreed. thing. Same thing with the same thing with the studios. Like we know what you're doing, and yeah, if you want to threaten these people for for what you know their jobs or whatever because you just because you didn't like it, okay, right, fine. But we're going to call you out for it. So. Right, 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 exactly. Um, you know. what what would your loser be? Oh, that you're right. Oh, I knew. Oh, it, <laughs> it was it was a hundred percent Marvel. I mean, I I could not believe I could not believe how in the begin right before all this happened, right before Doctor Strange: Multiverse of Madness, I told you that I was actually having a pretty good time with the MCU. Like I've yes. been, I've been really, and and I still think so. Up until that time, I was like, I'm really happy with the MCU so far. Yes. So like, it, Phase Four, yeah. and I think I think they still brought up bangers. I'm, I was very not much not disappointed until until Multiverse of Madness came out, and then I was like, oh wow, that. That was really not <laughs> what I was expecting at all. Right. And that was almost like not that great. And then right. then then each and then the, the three other four things that have come out, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, oh shit. This is like now nah, this is where like yeah, it's it they were so bad that uh I, I, now I'm worried. Like I'm just worried now. I'm not I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even like disappointed. I'm sweating yeah. bullets. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. what is the rest of these phases gonna look like? Yeah. Like, holy shit, this is it. I mean, I'm out. It might just be the quickest 180 uh, that I've ever had. And again, this is, I mean, Star, the MCU is our Star Wars, bro. Like, I'll Dude. fight for the MCU. I right. usually will fight for the MCU, but yeah. this shit they've been giving me lately, not fighting for that. Nope. Yeah. Can't even, can't even do it. They can't even, no. It's they've been, fallen so far from, uh, from point. It's been uh, a very weird MCU summer. And uh, maybe we'll get to it. Uh, yeah. No, I know we will get to it because I have a, a new segment and a mm. question oh kind of oh yeah that we'll pose that we haven't done yet but okay i'm excited uh, for that i'm excited yeah, we for gotta, that. we're gonna talk about it at nauseum because we love that <laughs> exactly yeah, it might, um, i'm guessing it's uh like any something to do with the phase four and being right. uh what the yeah. fuck's happening <laughs> yeah. or like yeah was phase four just in a weird experiment phase woke no i'm just kidding oh, oh, um boy. Uh, but anyway, what a title! Uh, you oh, you 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 really also quick. you yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Really quick, what would be your surprise of the summer? Something that you like were just surprised by? Oh, surprised by? Yeah, surprised by. Would I you mean, your losers surprise. I, I if, if you want to talk about what I was, I, I mean, obviously very surprised by that was that's obvious too, and that was that was the gray man. I mean, I again, uh, I told you, I was ready to give that. Yeah. play it off i wasn't even wanting i was almost gonna do laundry with it um i just didn't have to have laundry to do uh so <laughs> yeah and then that i it 180 to me really ha like really yeah. really quickly i was I, like this is actually pretty damn good man like yeah. this is actually really good yeah i love nice. the green man surprisingly as well i loved it 
Like I had a really good time. I literally sat there and I just watched it for what it was. And yeah. I was like that. Wow. That that really caught me off guard. Like I okay. anything I like another surprise. I don't think anything surprised me quite as hard as Bullet that for sure. Me. Bullet Train surprised me, that's but not as hard as the Gray Man. Oh, Bullet Train. Bullet, Bullet Train was yours. Oh, okay. Bullet Train okay. surprised me. I didn't expect it to be as fun as, as it was. That, yeah. I, like I was like, wow, I'm actually having a really good time watching this movie. And I know you okay. didn't love it as much. But it got too bogged down. You. Well, I got it. I loved it at the end. I love. Right, I right. love the second half, not the right. not the first half, right. but I did love it. Um, but I just, I actually thought you had, uh, you. I think you were more uh, excited to see Bullet Train that even than I did. So I was more excited to see Bullet Train. Okay, but okay. I, was, I don't know. I was kind of. like... You were still like a little. I'm excited to see this just because the trailers are really well done. Uh, but you know, you don't really know with trailers anymore. Uh, so you really, yeah. you really don't. No, you really don't. I mean, the best, the worst movie can be marketed the best and make millions and millions of dollars in the first weekend. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. I, Bullet Train would be my surprise. So, That's a good one. Yeah. yeah, no, that that was. I mean, I was also surprised. I want to. You asked earlier what was another sort of uh, loser. Okay. And I, I, I need to give a special shout out for a very specific purpose, and this is no surprise. Uh, I mentioned earlier, Morbius. Morbius is the loser's loser. I mean, Morbius. Summer. Oh, wait, what? Or Cockham's Summer Recap. Didn't that come out in May? No. Oh, that came out in eight. I'm sorry. That came out in uh, June. I'm sorry. Never no, mind. It did come out in June. Morbius? It did. Morbius came out in like February. April. Oh, shit. You're right. April. No, April. April. Mm. April 1st. April 1st. I forgot. It was, it was, it was. Uh, no, it felt like an April Fool's joke. So it was I, April. It was the April Fool's Day. It came out. You're uh, right. Never mind. That's not. That doesn't count. That doesn't you count. You're surprised though. at what? How bad it was? No, it's not oh, surprised. It was. It's a loser because yeah. it actually fuck. Oh no! This is. This is why. This is why it still counts. They re-released that motherfucker. They actually right. thought You're right. that people were gonna come back right. during the summer yes. to watch Morbius yes. because of a couple of Morbin time memes. Yes. You fucking loser, so I'm sorry. Who has ever idea that was? You're a loser. <laughs> I don't care who you are. Who's ever idea that I'm was? Loser, Sony. You're a loser. You read that so wrong. You read that. You read the cards so wrong, my friend. Uh, I don't yeah. know whose idea that was, but I I love you. But yeah. this is constructive criticism. Never do that you know again. What? You're right. You're right. Morbius would be a massive. It, loser it did come out again in the yeah, in, yeah. in the summer. Right, so right. that, that kind of counts. counts. That, that kind of count. counts. I, I'll give it to you. Uh, Morbius that's pretty, was, uh, that's when so we do our 2022 recap of films, holy shit, uh, we'll go, we're going to go. I have, I do have more. I do have more. So not as hard as that. So I'm okay. excited to keep going with 2022 once we get there. Yeah. Uh, there's more. Yeah. There's Ooh, some, yeah. there's some movies, there's some movies I've watched that you don't even know I've watched. And I'm like, what the fuck? Oh. <laughs> so that'll be fun. Yeah. Well, I don't know if we'll, I don't know if we'll share that with each other down the line or, or yeah. keep it a secret, yeah, keep but it'll be secret. interesting. Keep it a secret. Keep it a secret. All right, cool. All right. Yeah. We'll All do right. it. All right. But yeah, I think that's it. Um, I think that is it. So, yeah. Alex, thank you for another great pizza time. Thank Hope you. everybody else who were listening had a great time talking uh, news and a couple of reviews this week. And we will see you at the next one. Bye. Later.